Hello again. My next guest is Miguel Delay in Western Brazil. Buffaloes, which are introduced in Brazil and are non-native here. Incidentally, the area behind me is Sahado, which is kind of savanna. It's pure wilderness and it absolutely fascinates me. Here's Miguel to talk about buffaloes and stalking and hunting buffaloes. And I believe a lot of the general principles that Miguel describes when he talks about how to stalk a buffalo are applicable to stalking other big game in other countries as well. Enjoy. Okay, Miguel, this is uh, day two of our buffalo hunting safari. Uh, yesterday we did three stalks and today we're, uh, we're starting again. Miguel, please explain the technical aspects of a buffalo stalk. Uh, well, my friend, uh, like we did yesterday, uh, the first thing we, we always have to check is the wind. The wind yesterday was, was terrible, was changing every time. We only saw cows and calves and etc. Only w w one bull. Yesterday we started to, to, to follow a herd that we saw in, in the moment that the wind wa wa was better. We started to jump from bu bush to, to, to bush, trying to, to, to get closer and closer. Uh, enjoying every time we were, were, when the buffalo wasn't look, looking at us. Uh, always paying attention to the old cows who are, are more alert. And of course, always searching for, for, for a bull. And I'm pretty happy with what we did yesterday. We, we get close of uh, four, four times of the, the herd. And the same herd we, we got close three times. Why do we concentrate on bulls and not calves, not cows? Well, this is something more, who looks more ethical mm. for, for me because I want these buffalo to, to, to breed, to grow their, their population, to, to get a healthy po po population. Most part of times I'm, I'm looking or for lonely bulls or for bulls who are old enough to, to give place to younger bulls. Mm. Mm. I think this is a, a more sustainable way to hunt. Ecologically, buffaloes don't belong in Brazil. They're not native to Brazil, but they are here. Um, they don't cause an ecological problem to the ecosystem of the Pantanal, but what problems do they cause for farmers particularly? They eat the, the same grass as the cattle. And another thing is that bull, uh, that buffaloes doesn't respect the defenses. So if he, he sees something that he wants after a fence, uh, he just break it. As their cattle okay, can escape, uh, can mix each other. And, uh. What can you tell us about this habitat, Miguel, that we're driving through now? It's thick. It's the Pantanal, which is a huge wetland in South America. Uh, is this? native vegetation is it wilderness is it little touched by the hand of man oh yeah Pantanal for me uh, it's an area uh, where it is well enjoyed by, by the farmers for for cattle but it is not so, uh, th there's no much uh, human hand on this habitat because it, it's a place who is basically good enough for, for, for the cattle I think the only things that was made here was a few areas was open it and another uh, another species of grass was introduced here mm. oh, it's smelling a buffalo right now How, what does a buffalo smell like miguel well uh, it's, it's very similar to the cow smell but more sweeter we're uh, we're on our way to our first stalk of the day um what danger if any do we face Miguel in the field? Is the snakes? I don't see buffalo as uh, a great danger, but we will always have to have great, uh, great respect. We also have to remember it's a, it's a very big animal, and we are humans. We don't have the capacity to run or or fight. <laughs> <laughs> 
but in general buffaloes aren't that, that ag aggressive the only situations that uh, I, I can imagine of uh, a buffalo charging someone with in the, the intention to, to, to kill is some in injured buffalo or a calf who was left behind and the mother come come for, from it uh, this is the I think this is the most dangerous situations uh, I can think. What's the plan this morning as regards the stalking? We're going to cover the, the area uh, to see if we find some fresh tracks, to see if we find some buffalo signs. And if we have the luck to be still in the car and see far away a herd of buffaloes, we probably will hide the car in the bushes, uh, make the plan of how we, we get close, uh, check the wind and then it started stalking. What problems did Jaguars pose to cattle farmers in Brazil? Uh, well, my friend, uh, as you know, as a, as a falconer, biologist, is that predators always like to, to prey things who are easier for them, who gives more food, uh, who use less energy. And this makes the, the jaguar start, start eating cattle. But I think the animal who gives the, the, the biggest waste for the farmer are the pumas. What can the farmer do against the jaguar? Anything? Legally? Uh, legally, no. Uh, is the population of jaguars here in this part of Brazil, Western Brazil, increasing, decreasing, stable? Is the, the populations have increased. And how do you see um, the interaction between cattle farming and jaguars changing over the next 10 years? The big farmers, uh, the ones who have more heads of cattle, are the ones who, who can, can handle better the problem with the jaguars. Because, well, they have thousands of heads of cattle. Uh, yeah, the, the small holders can, can't handle uh, the, the, the loss so, so much because they have just few heads of cattle. Yep. If, we, if, he lo if he lose, one of it will be a bigger waste for them. Yeah. Thanks, Miguel. Okay, my friend. <laughs>